What do the dot-com bust, um, the U.S. losing the Iraqi war, the real estate market peak, the 2008 great financial crash, crash uh, Trump becoming president, what do all those have in common? Well, there's somebody who's been projecting and forecasting trends for over 40 years that's nailed all of those that I mentioned. His name is Gerald Salente, and we are going to jump into the trends that he's seen being developed right now, how he spots the trends, how he connects them, uh, what are the big driving forces, and of course, where are these trends forming and where are we going? Now, I do want to mention that Gerald is going to be one of my speakers that I'm having at the live event that I'm doing to survive the Great Reset. I'm going to have about 15 of the top speakers in the world coming to tell you what they think the next couple of years holds, and more importantly, what you should be doing to survive uh, this tr this turbulent time. I mean, the world is going crazy, and so you can hear from the top experts on what they see happening. Most importantly, what you should be doing. So come hang out with me, hang out with Gerald, hang out with the other speakers. Um, I'd like to see you there. There's a link in the description below, but let's go ahead and just jump right into the interview with Gerald right now. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Market Disruptors Show. And today I am joined by Gerald Salente. He is the founder director of the Trends Research Institute, publisher of the weekly Trends Journal magazine. And he focuses on trends, if you haven't figured it out. He's been doing this for over 40 years, and he has a pretty good track record of identifying some of the biggest trends. And because you're watching this show, I know you care about trends like I do. And so there's probably no one better to talk to than Gerald. So Gerald, thank you so much for joining us today. Ah, it's an honor to be on with you. Thanks so much. Yeah, I am. I'm. I'm very happy to have you here as well. I, I've been focusing on trends for most of my career, um, not making forecasts uh, and calls like you have. Just that I like to observe them. I like the way these patterns shape up. Um, and I was uh, fortunate enough to get to hang out with you and meet you um, at our, our mutual friend Max Kaiser's event in Phoenix uh, just a few weeks ago. So that was really cool. Um, but why don't you? I know I kind of intro introed you a little bit, but just tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess, what you've been doing over the last forty years, what you focus on, like what you're doing. Well, what happened was at a graduate school, um, I really didn't want to go to work. And <laughs> my mother passed on. I was a bartender down in the city, <laughs> New York. My mother passed away and I had two young sisters living in Yonkers. So I moved back to take, help take care of them. And I said, what am I going to do? So I, a guy was running for mayor of Yonkers. That's a city of over 200,000 people. And... I got involved in it and it was easy. It was cakewalk. And the guy became the longest running mayor in, in, in Yonkers. And I started working on election campaigns in Westchester County, designed and instructed a course at St. John's University, uh, American politics campaign technology. They sent me up to Albany. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. And I got to see everything firsthand. It was the worst job I ever had in my life to watch grown men grovel, to suck their way up to the top. Yeah. Then I became the number two guy running a major trade association. I was also the government affairs specialist before that. I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement back in the 1970s. Okay. 28, I was staying at the Willard Hotel and putting my meetings on at the Hay Adams. I have a picture of me and Ronald Reagan when I picked him up speaker at our uh, show two days before he's running against Gerald Ford, put on a meeting with him, a, a brunch in 16 of our board of directors. I've been with presidents, prime ministers and princes. I've been on the other side. So I got to see the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And what happened late 1970s, the Iranian revolution is going on. And I had been reading about that and following it for you know, a long time. And knew how the United States under Kermit Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt's great grandson, and the MI6 out of um, the UK. Matter of fact, in 2017, they released the records from that. It was only published in the Financial Times, hardly anybody knew about it. And Winston Churchill made it very clear that the Iranians had no right to the oil that was owned by. Anglo-Iranian oil, better known as BP, or Standard Oil, better known as ExxonMobil. So they overthrew the democratically elected government of Mosaddegh in 1953. They sucked the, the uh, Shah out from southern France, brought him in, had the Savak, the secret police that made the SS look good. Mm. So when the 
revolution started happening in the late 70s, and I'm watching millions of people taking to the streets and not leaving. I said, this thing's going down. But Americans were taught to hate the Iranians. And then the American, the Iranians saying, get out of here. We don't want you anymore. Close up your embassy and leave. No, we're not going to close it. We're staying. Don't you know who we are? So that's what happens, by the way. America, when the revolutions happen, they, they radicalize them by fighting them. And then the radicals take over. Yeah. So anyway, what happened was Jimmy Carter comes back from spending New Year's Eve with the Shah and his wife. And he comes back in those days, it was a big deal. You know, they have the helicopter and the salute. And he goes to the microphones and he said that the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East. In the Bronx, we used to have a saying, bullshit has its own sound. This guy was going down. So as all the press is, let, let's hate the Iranians, I said, what's going to happen? What will be the trend implications and I realized that golden oil prices would go up. I parlayed a $5,000 bet playing the futures market into almost three quarters of a million dollars. I ended up quitting my job because I was disgusted with what I was doing. I started growing up and realizing I was just doing this to make money. And, you know, you'll learn. I mean, you know, I'm not the same guy I was when I was a young guy. Sure. So I realized that current events form future trends. And if you look at things the way they are and not the way you want them to be, you have a better idea where they're going. And you have to make connections between different fields. Mm. And people don't do that. Economists look at economy. You know, one looks yeah. at only after the uh, opportunity misses those who view the, uh, the eyes through the, the, through the world through the eyes of their profession. And that's how I began the Trends Research Institute. And by the way, I lost almost uh, 600,000 of that, that three quarters of a million. You know, I was learning how to play the game. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so that's how I began. Yeah. Hey, hold up just for a second. I want to tell you about something. I just got something cool in the mail I want to show you. And it is this new sleek package I just got with a brand new credit card. This isn't just any credit card. This is a BlockFi credit card that's powered by Visa and it's backed by Bitcoin reward. So this is a Visa card. I can use it anywhere in the world that Visa is accepted. And the benefit of this BlockFi Visa card is that I get paid back in Bitcoin. Most of my other cards pay me in some sort of reward points. I get airline miles. Um, I'm not very good at using those. They end up accumulating and I don't do anything with them. But getting to earn Bitcoin back with every single purchase is, of course, something that matters to me. Now, I know for a lot of people, they say that the price of Bitcoin is too high. So I say, well, you can always earn Bitcoin. You can get paid in Bitcoin or you can just get cash back rewards on every purchase paid in Bitcoin with the BlockFi Visa credit card used everywhere uh, that Visa is accepted. And if you want to sign up for the Visa card that pays back in Bitcoin from BlockFi, there is a link in the description down below. Check it out. I love what you just said there, like connecting, you know, connecting different um, things, connecting different markets, connecting different trends. And um, when you're looking at a, a complex system, which of course the world is, um, you have to look at things holistically. You can't look at one thing. I think that's the problem with like modern medicine or even modern economics. They try to fix one thing, but then it causes problems elsewhere. Yeah. And I know a lot of times, um, you know, I'm, I mostly talk, I mean, I'm, I talk about finance and my, I, I try to change the way you think about money. Um, and sometimes I talk about political things and people will be like, oh, Mark, just stick to finance. I don't want to hear the politics. But like, if you don't understand the politics, how can you understand the finance? Right? Like they're all tied together. I guess that's what you're saying. Exactly. So we look at all, over 180 different trend categories and keep trying to make connections as much as we can. And you, I mean, the magazine, Mark, is what? This week's was 162 pages. Wow. No ads. Wow. 70 and that's, stories. And that's weekly. 70 stories. It's a weekly. Yeah. And it's only like, like $2 a week. Yeah. You buy a crappy newspaper for more than that a day. Yeah. Yeah. And they're giving you nuts. So we, we're putting our heart into this because it used to be a, a quarterly. It went to a monthly. And we made it a weekly because the way events are changing so rapidly. I mean, it's in 2020. Who would have believed that we're living in the world we're living in now? Right. I mean, it's a whole different, it's, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, we're in critical times. If people, if people don't stay on top of the trends and ahead of the news and on top of the trends, they're finished. It's gone. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. Because we have to stay one step ahead if we want to survive and, and thrive, I guess. Yeah, at least one step. 
Yeah. And again, the important part of it is that, a matter of fact, it was um, George Gammon. Uh, it was his line. And he said he's been studying very heavily uh, and reading history about the fall of empires. Mm -hmm. And it was a three-stage thing, he said. But the last one was at the end, the weak are leading the weak. Mm -hmm. Look who's leading us. How could anybody with a brain bigger than a pea look up to a Mitch McConnell, a Nancy Pelosi, a Diane not so Feinstein, a Lindsay did to come out of the closet yet Graham, a gruesome <laughs> little Newsome. I got this little godson over here, this, this uh, de Blasio, the mayor in New York. Yeah. How can anybody take orders from this piece of crap? And by the way, you know what his real name is? I know it's not de Blasio. I know he changed it. Warren Wilhelm Jr., and Which Warren, was a com yes, communist sympathizers, right? Uh, no, the, you know, Nazi sympathizers. Nazi, Nazi. Okay. And 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 he did it to get the Italian American vote in New York. So anyway, look at the people that are running. The weak. Could you get weaker than that? Could you imagine these guys going to you and me and telling us what to do, man to man? How right. long would it last? How long would it last? Not very long. Not no a blink of an eye before a blink of an eye. Yeah. Because that's the fight. Anyway, I just got back from being a keynote speaker at Ron Paul's War on Us event in D.C. Wow. Labor. Yeah, I was honored. You know, our personalities are so different in that he has me as a, a keynote speaker. Uh, JFK, uh, RFK Jr. was another one. And Judge Napolitano. When RFK Jr. was walking off the stage, and, and he's very emotional, he said... I will fight to my death with my boots on. Mm. And I, I had the crowd crying and laughing because the emotions, I'm a visionary. I see what's happening. So tears come to my, it was great. Over 500 people turned out. On the way back, I stopped at Cape May. This is all ties together about the week leading the week. Now, Cape May is, you know, it's a middle upper class place. You know, I'm staying at a hotel 700 bucks a night. When you go into Cape May, there's a sign that says you could take a boat for whale watching. You didn't have to get on the boat to watch the whales. All you had to do was walk the streets and, and the boardwalk. Whales everywhere. Guys like this, women like that. <laughs> it was heartbreaking. Yeah. 78%. I'm not making this number up. It's a CDC number. 78% of the people hospitalized for COVID are either obese or type 2 diabetics. Right. 42% of Americans are obese. 70% are overweight of that 40, 70%, 42% are obese. My heart was breaking as I was down in Cape May, yeah. looking at the people. No dignity. No self-respect and no fight. Yeah. Let's they talk about. They can't raise themselves. So it's the weak leading the weak. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the, you know, the whole generational theory, which is the uh, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men. And then the weak men create the bad times, which is what you're saying, right? The weak men are leading. It creates bad times. I want to talk about something that I've spent a lot of time studying history. Um, I study these cycles that even though things change, they seem to repeat. Um, you're, you're focusing on trends, which is a little bit different. Um, but I'm curious, um, in the trend, I guess. So the first question is, do you see like, so if I'm looking at cycles repeating, so for example, we're on a 250 year revolution cycle, 250 years ago was American French revolution, 250 years before that was a, um, um, Protestant Reformation. Uh, now we're seeing kind of revolution again. Um, do you think these trends also fit into those um, cycles or trends are new things that kind of come and go? I, I don't know if, about the cycles. I really okay. don't. Uh, what okay. we're going through now is unprecedented, Mark, in, in sure. human history. Yeah. And it, again, it's global. And I said, look at the freaks. Do you see the woman that, that's the head of the, the, the premier? And by the way, that's, those are curse words, calling people premier, governor, dignitaries, what you, you, say, take it easy. You know, that, that's, those are curse words. Anyway, yeah. that little boy, that, that Danny Andrews, you look at these little nothing clowns, look what they're doing in Australia. 
Yeah, it's a shame. Got 25 million people, a thousand deaths in 19 months. The average age is 81 years old. And they're locking down, locking down, locking down. And where's the fight of the people? Yeah. Oh, and they took their guns away from a couple of years ago, too. Yeah. Same thing in New Zealand. You look at the people that are running it. Yeah. I don't think this is a cycle. You know, I, I, I'll tell you what I think. I think this is beyond the human mind to understand. They found a skull, what, 36,000 years old a couple of months ago? Not a Neanderthal skull. It was like a big human skull. Okay. The point, they, then they found, you see the drawings they had in the caves from 30,000 years ago. They found in France and Spain and other places. What I'm saying is we don't have a clue. Well, there are more galaxies and grains of sand. Yeah. Something bigger is going on that this whole thing is global. And yeah. that freedom has been robbed from us in ways that we would never imagine. When you read the Declaration of Independence, you know, that that but by the creator, we were endowed with the with the rights of, 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 of life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Right. Happiness. Screw you. <laughs> Who the hell are you to be happy? Yeah. I'm the governor. I'm the mayor. I'll tell you what to do. Happiness. Who talks about happiness? When do you ever hear the word about happiness? Never. No. And that's our declaration of independence. There is no happiness. We got a bunch of tight asses, man, telling us what to do. Yeah. So I heard you, um, I heard you in another, uh, I think it was on one of your videos and, and you've, you've been kind of saying this, but you said that like uh, right now we're in the fight for our life. Yes. The fight for our life. So um, why don't you expand on that? What, what do you mean that we're in the fight for life? And is that in the United States or is that like a global thing? global but i don't care i care mostly about america i'm an american right i'm an american my blood is italian my heart's american if i was born in alta villa apina vica quince i wouldn't be me right. i'm me but i'm a napolitano born in the bronx born to be free right born to be who i wanted to be i get in a fight with my father he say you little bastard you think i'm telling you what i'm telling you because i want you to be like me i want you to be yourself you're not allowed to be yourself anymore. Mm, oh, you know, no individualism. You have, be, you have to be like I tell you to be. You have to believe in this. You have to believe in that. You cannot think for yourself. That's not allowed anymore. We have lost our freedom in ways that are unimaginable. I don't want to get a, I don't want to get a gene therapy shot. Right. If you want to get one, knock yourself out. Right. Don't you dare tell me I have to get one. No, you have to get one. I want to make this really clear to everybody listening. Again, I could show you the pictures. I've been with presidents, prime ministers, and princes. It's a crime syndicate that morons and imbeciles call the democracy mm. of the United States. You got the banksters. How much more proof do you need? How stupid can you be? They're too big to fail. You're just a piece of crap. Too big to fail. What, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, no, no. We screwed everybody with these 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 subprime mortgages. We, we had a whole fictitious game going over there. And now we're losing money. We want to take it. Give us money. We, OK, I'm Obama, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner. And, right. and George, the murder of Bush. Here's money. The banksters. Number two. Don't believe me. Ask a guy by the name of Dwight D. Eisenhower. Five-star general, not like these little gutless boys. Supreme right. commander of the Allied Forces, two-term president. His farewell address, January 17th, 1961. Anybody could Google it up and listen. Warning the American people that the military-industrial complex was robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. Right. Number three. Morons and imbeciles call them big pharma. They're drug lords. Get it yeah. in your head. They're drug dealers. Look at the commercials they run on TV. How could anybody with a brain take the crap? There's no allotropic drug that cures a chronic degenerative disease. Oh, by the way, I have an honorary doctor from the National University of Health Sciences for the work I've done in complementary and integrative medicine. And the first book I worked on was called Natural Healing. I worked on in 1986 
a Warner book, Dr. Jack Saltonoff. I know a little thing or two about this. How can you take this crap? Right. And number four, big tech. Right. I'll tell you what to say. I'm going to censor what you say. I don't like what you say. I'm some little gutless piece of shit. I'm a little Zuckerberg. I'm a cook. I'm a Pritzker. You're a little son of a bitch. A yeah. Dorsey. How can you make these guys freakier? And they're in charge. They're in charge. They are in charge robbing us of our declaration of independence for you to be you, me to be me, and for us to be free. We're in the fight for our lives. And I'm telling you, RFK Jr., and you can see it on Ron Paul's Liberty Report, the video, tears are coming out of his eyes, heartbroken, as he finishes his talk. I'm mm -hmm. fighting to my death with my boots on, and so am I. And so am I. I've, uh, I've vowed that rather die on our feet than live on our knees. And I think uh, we're all in agreement to that. I think, you know, the fight for our lives too, it just seems like um, every time you give up an inch, you uh, an inch of ground, you never get that ground back. And kind of to your statement that you said earlier, like who would have imagined a year, year and a half ago that we'd be in this situation today. And, um, but we are, <laughs> it's gone way faster than we've ever imagined. And now the, the types of restrictions they're talking about putting in, like once those are in place, I think the, ch the chance of rolling these things back is pretty much slim to none. Let me make this very clear. Again, all things are connected. There was a movie that they did about me. I, I mentioned it to you, but Zizzy and Honey Boy, that mm -hmm. Doris Roberts, the woman who played the, the mother in Everyone Loves Raymond. And the, you could get the trailer. It's on YouTube, Zizzy and Honey Boy. And the guy playing me is on the phone with a producer. I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, Good Morning America. And the Afghan war breaks out. And I said, you tell them we're going to lose the war. And I got blackballed from everybody. You're either with us or you're with the terrorists. Right. 88% of the people bought it. Going back and I'm putting the trends together, making connections between different fields. And I'm taking off on what you said about all the mandates, and all the restrictions and all they're doing to us and how easily they're doing it and how much control they're in. Our Trends Journal, October 1999, front page, dot-com bust. We said it would happen by the second quarter of 2000. It did. George Bush gets elected, takes office in 2001. We're in a severe recession. All of a sudden, 9-11, the Afghan war, the fake real estate boom, fake market buildup. When all else fails, they take you to war. Mm, yeah. And that's what I fear when I say we're fighting for, we're gonna be fight, it's gonna be the fight of our lives. When you could have people so stupid to listen to that little daddy's boy, George W. Bush, probably with a peck of small and a cockroach, telling people what to do and believing it, the same thing's going to happen again because this global economy is going to crash in ways that are un unimaginable. Right. Look at the numbers already. Look at inflation. Remember that loudmouth Powell, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair? Go back to February. Well, it's only temporary. Okay, right. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah. And it keeps going up. It's not temporary inflation. You're full of crap. Yeah, it, look, oh, and, it looks and, like, and, and to keep going with it, look what's going on with travel, airlines, going down the toilet, hospitality, trade shows, conventions, gone. We are going to have an economic collapse, the likes of which are unimaginable. And when all else fails, they take you to war. And if you don't believe me, what was it, the Great Depression? No, this, this, the crash of 29, Great Depression, World War II. Go back to World War I, the banksters. Remember that one? Yep. Yeah, crashing the economy and the murder of lousy little piece of crap. Woodrow Wilson brings the banksters in to take control and then gets us into World War I. When all else fails, they take you to war. That's why I'm so concerned. So go on. Yeah, I mean, and we can see, you mentioned George Bush and, and the Iraq war. And just days before that happened, it was Donald Rumsfeld at the Pentagon was talking about what, $2.3, $2.4 trillion was 
that was gone. Listen, and then, oh, but now we're in a war, so let's not worry about let's that. Forget about that. And, 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 and you know, and, and even even with the with the situation with the 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 cerveza sickness, as our friend George like to call it, um, you know, in September of 2019, the entire overnight banking system right. seized up. That's right. And it was requiring a 75. $75 billion to keep the banking system from locking up. That was in September of 2019. By March of 2020, it was taking a trillion dollars to keep the banking system from freezing up. And then it's like, now we're in a war, a different type of war, obviously. Um, and so if you look at that, and then what's interesting is, um, uh, again, if you start putting these all together, where like the financial system started I mean, where did it start coming off the rails? 1971, 2008, uh, 2020, uh, wherever you want to put that number. But like, we can see that the financial system is so fragile and falling apart. Um, and then today, it almost seems like they're trying to crash the economy. So Biden puts in this mandate policy that could potentially put 80 million people out of work in an environment that already is suffering, already doesn't have enough jobs. And so almost like, well, let's force the economy to shut down even more. And then when the whole system crashes, we can blame it on that as opposed to the financial system that we made a mess of that's already crumbling. And going back to the, the repo markets, from September to January, they pumped in $7 trillion, the feds. Yeah. And going back, Again, when you go back to 71, I have a photo, I have a picture of me and John Connolly, who took the bullet in the back sitting in front of Kennedy. He wanted to meet me. I have a picture of me, him and his wife in front of the book depository. He was the governor of Texas when that happened. He was the treasury secretary under Nixon when they took us off the gold stamp. As we're walking back into the Anatole Hotel, he looks at me. I had my book Trend Tracking that came out, far better than Megatrends. He wanted to meet me. And um, he said, I read your book. And he said, I know your heart's in the right place. He said, well, you don't have a clue what's going on. And neither do the American people. Because if they did, there'd be a revolution in this country. Yeah. And going back to 1971, what caused, the, what caused that decline? Oh, it couldn't have been the Vietnam War, could it? Couldn't have been the military industrial complex. No, no, the trillions that were spent. No, murdering innocent people. That was fine. Right. Oh, now who's, that's one of our big trading partners now, like the Chinese communists. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, it, it looks like, I mean, based off of history and based off these trends that you've been tracking that, yes, of course, they use war. I mean, oh, definitely correlated, if not causated. But uh, whenever the economy starts to stumble, then war comes out a way to distract the people. Um, we've laid out the case that uh, the economy was already crumbling and now they're trying to create this war. Um, I guess, do you think they want to keep the economy going um, so they can keep their game playing? Or do you think at some point or even now they want to actually crash it? No, they want to keep it going. They, they want, want to keep it going. it going. Yeah. You look what's going on with the merger and acquisition activity. It's at all time highs, all time highs, breaking records. They want to get bigger and bigger and fatter and fatter. Oh, you saw the numbers that came out this week about um, median household income took out the biggest, biggest decline in, two, in 2020 than all recorded records. Really? I didn't see that yep. number. Yep. And the billionaires in 2020, they only got $8 trillion richer. Mm, that's it. So the, the bigs are getting bigger. Again, my gener when I grew up as a kid, there were grocery stores, not grocery chains. Mm -hmm. There were hardware stores. There weren't the low. They did away with all the, the Robinson Patman Act, Shorter Man Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, Robinson Patman Act, and of course the Glass Steagall Act. That allows the bigs to get bigger. These are greedy, sick people. They're pathological liars, sociopaths, and psychopaths. All they want is more and more and more, and they give back virtually nothing. They want to keep the, again, the numbers are there. Merger and acquisition activity is at an all time high. They're getting the money for nothing and they're buying up everybody. But if so they're they putting in getting bigger. 
if they're if they're continuing to put in uh, you know orders and mandates that continue to make it harder for the economy to to work and potentially as I said maybe 80 million Americans potentially I mean maybe some of them will go along with it half of them won't 40 million Americans go out get out of a job they go on um, stimmy at this point um, I mean that seems like they want to crash the system though I mean how no, they don't care they don't care about those people those people don't even exist in their minds so the economy doesn't matter they can just keep no, the they don't what people what you are yeah, throw them a penny. Get out of here. Go, go, go. Are you kidding? They live in a whole nother world. They're in a whole nother world. They could care less. They don't, they don't, they're totally disconnected. So they can, they can put the people on stimmy, give them the breads and circuses like the Roman Empire, and then just keep the markets elevated. Yeah, that's all. They're the king and, and the nobleman. Those are curse words too, by the way, a king and a nobleman. What the yeah. hell are you talking to? You know, I anyway, just sometimes they could care less. They could care less. They, they care less. Sometimes I just think about like what the end game agenda is because there's no uh, end game agenda. It's just their own greed. And that's all they think about. They, they, these are these are mentally ill people. You know, one of the lines when the guys run for president, when, what will their legacy be? Who gives a shit when you're dead? What legacy? What the hell do I care? What legacy? That shows you the egomania, maniacal brain they have. Yeah. What's your legacy? What are you doing now? Who are what? you now? How are you rising to the highest levels you can now? And again, I'm not the same guy who was when I was a young yeah. guy. You know, shit that I pulled in my life. And so you're supposed to keep growing. They don't care. I know these people. Let's um, let's look at another. So we, I think we set, we've set the problem up pretty pretty big, and obviously it's uh, it's bleak, and we're in the fight for our lives. I think we both agree there. Um, another trend that we have, um, and which you've you've forecasted quite a bit, as a matter of fact, about the dot com era, about the internet technology, and um, I've seen some of your uh, some some of your trends and forecasts that you've done along that. But the internet has given us a tool to where we can learn, we can uh, share information. So, for example, you and I would have never met. Uh, pre-internet possibly, whatever, right? Um, and it's like on one hand, and maybe there's two two trends that are competing. That's what I want your opinion on. So there's on one one there's definitely one trend of people becoming more stupid and paying less attention and being more sheep. Um, but but the internet has also seemed to start a whole nother trend of people that do care, that are learning, that are watching this channel right now. And also, more importantly, what it's done is it's made it almost impossible or at least extremely hard for these uh, elite or whatever you want to call it, government bodies to hide what they're doing. Um, so now there's this level of transparency and scrutiny that was never there before. Um, and so those are maybe almost two competing trends. What do you think about those? Oh, definitely. Uh, absolutely. Again, there's a great quote by Samuel Adams. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Mm, yeah. Those are the people, Mark, that are tuned in to you, subscribe to my magazine, yeah. and that, that are in what we do. And yes, those are the great things about the internet. You go back to 19, early 1990s. I remember when all this happened. And I remember when newspapers were stupid enough to give their content out for free and put it on, I couldn't believe they were doing it on the internet because that was the new way and it was open for everybody and everybody could have freedom. That was the, that was how it was sold. Right. Freedom, total freedom. And then of course the bigs took over. And by the way, to me, that's one of the great on trend preneur opportunities is a whole new social media movement. Like you were talking about with, your Bitcoin building on Bitcoin. Yeah. And those are, there's no better opportunity than now. No question about it. If we unite and my talk at Ron Paul's war on us event was we must unite united. We stand divided. We fall. Yeah. We have to get under one umbrella. I talked about George Gammon to this. I've been talking about uh, to others about it. And that was my talk that we have to go under one umbrella a thought that I have, and I'm not pushing it. I'm just trying things. Is I started a church. The universal church of freedom, peace, and justice. 
So whatever religion you believe in, if your gods believe in freedom, peace, and justice, let's unite. Because they're robbing our freedom. They've stolen our peace. And just us, yeah, it's just us when we get caught for a crime, we get the fullest you know, penalty of the law, while the big ones get a slap on the wrist. Hey, did you yeah. see the one last week with Wells Fargo? A little yeah. slap on the wrist, $250 million fine. How many times has Wells Fargo been found in criminal acts? Oh, how about, how about J.P. Morgan Chase? How about that little shit diamond? Yeah, look at that little shit diamond. How about how, many how about times have they been? Sh- oh, they only rigged the precious metals market. Yeah. Oh, they got fined nine hundred million dollars. They rigged the precious metals market. The scumbags. Only a slap on the wrist. Freedom, peace, and justice, because they've stolen all three from us. And you know, people say to me, "Oh, Salenti, you should calm down. Let's get this in your head." Oh, by the way, he's talking about the banksters. Who was that guy? What was his name? Jesus Christ? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did he do? He made a whip. He couldn't buy it at Walmart. Then he had to make his own and drove the money changes out of the temple. Yeah. Violently, violently. Who the money changes? Who the money changes? The banksters. You got it. And they're the ones that are destroying our lives. Oh, you don't put money in the bank. You don't get any interest rate on it. No, 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 no. But I'm a bankster. Hey, we'll give you money for 0.35% and charge them anything that you want. Charge them anything that you want. 27%, whatever you want. Yeah. We'll give it to you for nothing. Look who's our head of the Treasury Department. How stupid can you be? How? Oh, oh, isn't it nice they put a woman in there? Uh, Yeah, I don't care. Black, yellow, green, women, men, good and bad coming all of them. Janet Yellen, the former head of the Bankster Group, the Federal Reserve, that's our Treasury Secretary. How stupid can you be? Yeah. Yeah. And you can see, you know, uh, in, in uh, Rothbard's book, Anatomy of the State, they talk about the state and, and how it's just there to protect its power, grow its power. And he said, you can tell if the that, state is out for the people or to protect itself by who do they go after the hardest? Do they go after people who t- do crimes against other people or crimes against the, the state? And of course, we can see that to the point that you've made, you know, Wells Fargo and these people getting slaps on the wrist. I just wanted to take a second to explain to you one more time just how cool having this new BlockFi Visa credit card is. I've started to move a lot of my bills over to get paid from this. Of course, all my business supplies, I'm starting to pay for this, my advertising budgets, and I'm starting to run as much as I can through it because I'm getting paid a percentage back of every single transaction in Bitcoin. We want to save in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is an asset that goes up in value because of the deflationary nature of it and we want to spend our fiat. So I'm spending my fiat through my uh, BlockFi Visa card and I'm getting back Bitcoin that I can save and I can hold. I expect it to go up in value a lot. I expect to hold my Bitcoin. I'm gonna pass it to my kids and my grandkids and hopefully my great grandkids will have my Bitcoin one day. So I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna spend my fiat uh, through this card and I'm gonna earn back Bitcoin that I'm gonna save. If you wanna get one, there's a link down below. Um, one thing you just mentioned, though, like, you know, we put our money in the bank, the bank loans that money back out, fractionally reserves that money, um, and they pay us 0. you know, 0.06% on it. Um, and so now in this cryptocurrency space, you have like stable coins, and now they've set up peer-to-peer lending markets where people can earn 7%, 8% of their money. And now all of a sudden, the SEC, Elizabeth Warren, they're coming out full guns blazing against these crypto companies who are paying people six, seven, eight percent on their money. Of course, they don't want that competition. That's right. And again, as I said, you know, that to me is the only thing that's going to slow it down. Yeah. Is government regulations. And again, once upon a time, my father told me the story too, but everybody, of course, knows when FDR took the gold, now yeah, you had to turn in your gold. I'm a little kid. My father's telling me, may may rest in peace. He said, you know, your grandfather had a lot of gold. And I go over to his house and he's packing it up. And I said, Pop, what are you doing with the gold? He said, oh, the president wants us to turn it in. She's not going to, don't turn it in. Oh, no, I have to turn it in. She said, I said, yeah, he gave it, he gave it to them. Well, they give it, they turned it in for what? Was it $22 or $22 and change an ounce? Yeah. And then they, then they, after they got old and they brought it to $33 an ounce. Yeah. I mean, right in front of your eyes right in front of your eyes. To me, anybody leaving money in the bank 
Oh, a oh, quick story. Um, 9-11. I had USA Today, when it was a big newspaper, used to run my top trends every year. And the one for 2001 read, 2001 won't be our year, Trendseer says. They ran that in December of, of, of 1999, just before 2000. So when, when um, uh, uh, 2001 won't be our year, they wrote it in 2000. So when 9-11 happened, the first thing I did, I got on the phone and I call, I'm watching it on TV. I was watching uh, CNBC. I called up my, my uh, former girlfriend, Marie Pierre, wonderful woman from Paris. And she lived near me up in Rhinebeck. I said, get your money out of the bank. So what happened? I said, I said the World Trade Center. Oh, Gerald, you're kidding. I said, no, get your money out of the bank. I called up, I had CDs. I forgot the name of the bank. It was bought out. It was a big bank. It was up in Boston. I had CDs and I wanted to cash out of them, send them to the bank in Rhinebeck. And they said, I'm sorry, Mr. Salenti, Wall Street's closed. Certificates of deposits to financial instruments that are traded. I couldn't get my money. Yeah. I couldn't get my money. With just I mean, like that. I mean, and that's exactly you. You reference that's the that, point I'm making. You reference how they got the gold was the same situation, right? The exactly. gold was in the banks and they so just I say, the why would you keep money in the why are you keeping money in a bank when they don't give you anything and they loan it out and make money on it? It's a criminal mm -hmm. operation right in front of your eyes. When I was a kid, they were, oh, we got to stop the mafia, the mafia. What mafia? They're yeah. not your mafia. You got a crime syndicate right in front of your eyes. You call it Washington. Yeah. So let's um let's let's try to transition a little bit from this. Uh, I uh, we're we're definitely in the fight for our lives. Um, you know, I've talked about this trend. <laughs> That's a big trend. I'm not the trend guy. You are, um, but I think it's apparent to everybody um, that it, anyone's paying attention anyway that we are trending. The whole world is trending towards you know totalitarianism, uh, authoritarianism, whatever you want to call that, uh, and we can see that um, technology. Uh, unfortunately, is uh, a tool that they can use to really get our lives under control through passport systems with, you know, central bank digital currencies inside and global IDs and so forth. So the world, so the, so the trend is going that way. Um, I'm not okay with that. Uh, obviously, I know you aren't either. Um, I guess, does the trend uh, eventually swing back the other way? Do we have to force the trend to, to swing it. back the other way? What, what, where do we it. go from here? You have to fight it. We have, we need a whole, we have, we have to get rid of the, the corrupt parties that are running the show. We have to fight it. It's not yeah. going to change under the conditions that it is, that, that are there. And yeah. you talk about digital, that to me is going to hurt. It's, it's not, it's going to take a shot and is when they go digital from dirty cash to digital trash. Yeah. <laughs> and China's doing it already. Yep. And they're, and they're the leaders in this. And they're going to go digital so they know every penny that you spent, where you spent it, how you spent it, what you spent it on, so they could get their cut in the name of taxes. That we even have federal taxes. That's another thing. What the hell we oh that was oh that was Woodrow Wilson too, I think, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. 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 Princeton, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. Who's the president yeah. of Princeton? That's who's running the show. Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. Right in front of your eyes. Yeah. Another trend that just popped up has been in the news this week was um, uh, under the Biden admin and this new infrastructure bill, of course, how are they going to pay for this $3.5 trillion? Well, what we can do is we can make every bank report to us every single bank account that has over $600 in that. Yep. So one, besides the obvious uh, intrusions on the constitution, right? To search and seizure and whatnot, um, just even in practice, it's almost impossible. Like these banks are coming out and saying, there's just no way we can do this. Like we can't comply with it. It's not going to work. Um, and then for the people they're saying, well, that's, you know, that's an intrusion of our privacy. And already I've started to see the message coming out and saying, well, central bank digital currencies would offer you way more privacy. Oh, and by the way, banks, uh, central bank digital currencies will make it way easier to track things. You got that's it. A trend. You got it. You yeah. got it. And that's it. They're going to track every. No, oh, they're doing it with everything. With you know all the technology, they're tracking, you know, facial recognition on and 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 maybe injecting you with something too that uh, they could track you with that. And yeah. They're doing that. Yeah. So um. So so that's where we're at. We're going into and and you know the other thing is like 
some people that aren't really paying attention, which I can't imagine, might consider this conspiracy talk. Um, but they're putting it in books. They're putting it on websites. I mean, I uh, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, he wrote two books, one, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, and two, COVID-19, The Great Reset. And if you just read the books, they tell you what they're doing. Yeah. Um, uh, so Mark, she- Mark, Mark Carney, head of the Bank of England, head of the Bank of Canada, uh, envoy to the UN, uh, World Economic Forum, he wrote a book. <laughs> He tells you what they're doing. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, there is this, whatever you want to call it, great reset agenda that's coming. Um, I'm hosting a live event in November where we're going to have some of the best speakers, which you've agreed to come speak as well. And we'll try to talk about some actual, maybe practical things that can be done to, mm-hmm. to survive. Because I think these next five, six years, um, I'm hopeful that we are able to push back and resist. I am hopeful that we'll overcome it, uh, but it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be good. Again, if we unite in the proper way to make it happen, it could, we could change it. And you look at who we're fighting, we're fighting nobodies. You know, they want to think that there's somebody else behind the scene, you know. It's the Wizard of Oz, man. You see who's behind the curtain. There's nobody there. Yeah. As we say in the Bronx, when you call these guys out man to man, they wouldn't know whether to piss or shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. How did the Berlin Wall come down? People the Berlin Wall came down because they stopped complying. And what happened? People went and they didn't leave. More came right. and they didn't leave. More came, they didn't leave. More came and they didn't leave. More came and they didn't leave. And that's what we have to do. It's not a one day rally. It's you, me, everybody we know that feels like we do where we go by the millions and we don't leave. Mm -hmm. And what you have to understand, all you little clowns out there called government leaders, is the Declaration of Independence. It's the, we the people, the governed, govern you. Right. And these little clown boys and clown girls forgot two words. Public servant. Right. You do what we tell you to do. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. So that to me is the only way we win. And, yeah. it, and I want to make this point. It's very important. I, I was a, I try to attend all the rallies I can. I hold them up here in Kingston, as you know. And I went to one a couple of weeks ago in New York City where I was a speaker. And it was in Columbus Circle on 57th Street. 8.3 million people in New York, maybe about 3,000 people showed up. And I said to the, after the people, you know, they thanked me for coming, you know. I had everybody uh, uh, shouting, by the way, about de Blasio, the mayor there, Warren Wilhelm Jr., is his real name, that um, his mandate that you have to get a vaccination to go into any place to take that mandate. So I had had two, 3,000 people yelling, shove that mandate up your ass, shove that (laughs) mandate up your ass. Yeah. Going back to the whole movement, I tried to tell them that we have to keep this going and we can't leave. When in one area, out the other. There was a protest in New York, I'll never forget it, 1982, against nuclear arms, the nuclear race. Almost one million people gathered in Central Park in New York City. Wow. Then there, I'll never forget it. And I just looked it up to remind myself, and there it was. Caspar Weinberger. Yeah, the murderous Caspar Weinberger, that was the defense secretary under Reagan, that was given, again, the pardon, the pardon for his involvement in the Iran-Contra scandal, is quoted after that rally, and he was building up the nuclear business really big. Yeah, these, 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 um, events, these rallies get a lot of attention, but after they're over, they're over. Yeah. And we really don't do anything because of that. Right. Words to that effect. Yeah. So it's really, um, it's really civil disobedience. I, I, I was no, thinking civil obedience. Uh, I get, yeah. I, oh, I, I heard this, I was listening to this, uh, this video earlier, a couple of days ago, and it was talking about how, you know, over the last century, the last hundred years, um, you know, socialism, communism, fascism has killed hundreds of millions of people. And it said that hundreds of millions of people have died 
because they obeyed. That's right. Not, not because they disobeyed, yeah. they died because they obeyed. And so when you look at it under that lens and it's like, then almost the thing to do is to not obey. That's right. Oh, who are we obeying again? Right. It's not, it's not civil disobedience. We're not taking shit from some crap head. They're making up this garbage. Look what they're doing. Are we talking about the lockdowns. Can't leave your home. Hey, hey, dope. What, look at the numbers. What with the facts? Getting it outside, the chances are what? One percent or less, and I got to stay home. Yeah. Who's dying from it? Why don't, you do, why don't we just take care of the people that are most susceptible to it and leave everybody else alone? Oh, and you got, got to worry about COVID. Forget all that. You know, Monsanto is a great company. Those GMOs are wonderful for you. And all the pesticides and the chemicals on our food and all the shit, the chemicals in the, and the preservatives and the artificial flavoring, the colors and, and all the chemicals they dump into the water and, and spray. And it, those are all fine for you. Don't worry about that. Got the COVID to fight. Got the COVID it, to fight. It's like, it's like magic, right? Where it's like sleight of hand. Hey, look over here while I'm doing this it. to you over here kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, it's no, kind it's of over here and then they're going like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Something like that. So yeah, yeah it's like, it's like magic. Yeah, they're you know, us they're, off is what they're doing. So um, what does the great trends forecaster, Gerald Salente, tell us about the future uh, in this giant trend that we're on towards authoritarianism? Look at we have to fight it. But again, yeah. on the, to, I, my GCs, three Gs, I told you what happened on 9-11. Because again, I forecast this stuff was going to happen. And I was ready to go to Canada because they said the planes were going down the Hudson River. And I know this area inside out. And there's yeah. Indy Point over there, the nuclear power plant. Where oh. I used to go water skiing before they built it. I used to go water skiing around there as a kid going over the wakes of ships until the nun beat me up and perfumed my middle ear and broke my eardrum. Yeah. I get my ears wet again. But anyway, I was just thankful Father Foley was a ladies man. It could have been a lot worse. You know, I'm wondering if the planes go down and hit that power plant, there's going to be chaos like we've never seen before. Mm, yeah. so I was ready to leave. I got filled my uh, jerry jugs up with water. I went out and bought big five gallon jerry jugs, got maps. They had maps in those days. And I'm only about four and a half hours from the, the Canadian border. And I was going to go up to Canada to get out of here. So when I tell people, have a, have, prepare for the worst. Mine were guns, gold, and a getaway plan. And prepare for the worst. If the worst doesn't happen, you lose nothing. If the worst happens and you're not prepared, you're going to lose everything. Mm. And people better prepare because this thing's going down like we've never seen in our lifetime. Yeah. It's right in front of your eyes, everybody. Our freedom has been robbed from us. Tyrants are in control. Around the world. The Chinese way you will obey. We used to laugh at the Chinese for wearing masks. We used to, my God, look at that. They locked down a province. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. And now we're doing it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to uh, Zuby uh, a couple of days ago and he was saying, he's like, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. And he's like, when I grew up in Saudi Arabia, people used to laugh and they'd say over there in Saudi Arabia, aren't the girls, they're all covered up. Like their whole face is covered up. He's like, and now we're all doing it. <laughs> like people used to laugh about that, you know, uh, but going back to what you said, the three G's, Gold guns and getaway, right? That, that was the three G's. Yeah. Um, and so I would, I would definitely agree to that. I think that um, as this trend is uh, obviously trending towards totalitarianism, what breaks that trend so it can go back the other way? And uh, it's not that these uh, leaders decide to wake up one day and go, oh, let's give some freedom back, right? We have too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think what breaks that grip eventually is competition. Yep. And in order and for the competition to kick in, we have to go. So we have to go. Well, that's the getaway, one of your G's, right? So we need to go to where we're treated best. What we've seen in California and New York, they were the strictest and Texas and Florida outcompeted them. And uh, both governors went on the chopping block. Uh, one made it, one didn't, but you can see what that competition has done. But what about when we start having countries compete for each other? Um, so that's the go and that's the competition part. And the second piece, I think, to your your other G is the gold. And so um, when I was a kid, and I'm not as old as you, but I still was alive. I grew up when the Cold War was going on and the Berlin Wall was still up. And I had friends that came over from oppressive countries. And I know when their families came, they couldn't bring their gold. Uh, they couldn't bring their money. Uh, they couldn't bring their real estate. So they basically came penniless. 
Um, but what does that really do to a country if you leave, but they keep your wealth? Oh, yeah. And so uh, with gold, we can take some of that wealth with us. With Bitcoin, we can take that wealth with us. And it really speeds that competition loop up. Oh, yeah. Well, I say Bitcoin. Well, that was saying my three Gs were before the cryptocurrency. No, I know. Started. I know. I was just yeah. putting it together. Yeah. But I agree with you. And, and I don't give financial advice. But for me, only speaking for myself, gold, silver, Bitcoin are my investments. And I have, I'm lucky, I have real, you know, wonderful real estate that I buy. I own, if you Google up most historic four corners in America, Kingston, New York, I own three of the buildings on the most historic four corners, the 1774 Academy, the 1750 Franz Rogan House, and the 1763 Dr. Jensen House. And, you know, so I have, I bought them because the seeds of democracy was sown here. This was the first, Kingston was the first capital of New York state before the, then the British burnt it down, they moved it to Albany. The constitution that was written for Kingston when it was the capital, over 70% of America's constitution comes from it. And John Jay, the Supreme Court judge, he's right across the street over here. That's where he was. And wow. Yeah, so, and so too other three other Supreme Court justices later. So I bought these buildings because they represent in the area represent freedom and democracy. And so I call it the four corners of freedom. And that's why I bought them way back when nobody wanted them. And now, and now you're being driven from your home. Yeah. I don't like it here anymore. It's no fun. Everybody's uptight. And I, I used to go out to jail. I love jazz. And I used to go to different places. Got to show you vaccine passport. And I loved Kingston because it was very diverse. But now you have to think like I do. You have to believe what I do. If you don't believe what I do, you have no right to believe in anything. Don't right. you know that I know everything and you don't know anything? You have to think like I do. Yeah. And so it 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 it, it really lost it. And um, again, we you used know, to have, we used to have tolerance for people that were different, and now it I seems know. like all that. That's why I loved it. Gone. Yeah. It's gone. And that was the New York attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave me. You know, everybody was different. You know, yeah. yes. and you enjoyed that. You enjoyed that. Hey, this guy's like this. This one's like that. This one's like this. Now, now you all have to be woke, just like me. Dead woke. Yeah. Yeah, and again, you got you have a passport that you, and you can't you can't go out. You can't do anything. And, yeah. and oh, by the way, this is the other thing, too. When I was a kid, you said run these ads at night, little commercials. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? You know, we're out crazy, you know. 10 p.m. The streets are dead. Now. It's dead. Yeah. 10 p.m. It's dead out. It's dead. Yeah. Dead. They, I was suck, they suck the soul out. It's dead. The streets are empty. You couldn't get parking up here. Now you can park anywhere you want. It was the biggest complaint up here. Uptown yeah. Kingston. Can't get parking. Can't get parking. Yeah. And, and again, it's dead. So going back to the economy's going down big time. The bigs are totally out of touch. Again, what we, I talked about earlier, you heard the BS floating out of Powell's mouth going back to February. That inflation was temporary. Right. Wages are going down. Inflation is going up. There's another thing, too, that people, again, in our Trends Journal, we have self-defense courses by Bradley Stein, who's one of the top guys. And I may have told you, you know, I used to teach self-defense myself, and my teacher was taught by Steiner. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. Yeah. And it goes back to the fight. You better get in the best shape you can physically, emotionally, and spiritually because people are going to be losing it big time. The homeless situation is it's out of control. And by the way, talking about the homeless situation, if the virus was so deadly, where are those three quarters of a million homeless people? How come they're not filling up the hospitals? Right. Yeah. The don't ask, don't are, ask don't ask rational questions, Gerald. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no one can think rationally more. You know, it's uh, you know, uh, I mean, George Orwell wrote wrote about it in 1984, which was written in the 40s, and he talked about you know, war is peace, right? Uh, everything is backwards, and so it's like um, if you look at these tools, like they want to like confuse you, so like you can't have rational thought, um, and so up is down, left is right, men are women, and all these things, and. Uh, for me, it's been the probably the hardest thing, the, probably the thing that makes me the most mad on top of 
how uh, unhappy I am with the policies. It's the contradictions and the double standards that just even make it worse for me. But I think it's all on purpose. It's all meant to just confuse you and disorient you even more. Yeah, confuse you, disorient you, and control you. Yeah. Again, the BS, if you're vaccinated and you're wearing a mask, you're safe. Leave me alone. Yeah. Why are you telling me that I'm hurting other people? That I'm, no, I'm not. I'm hurting anybody else that what does, doesn't want to do that. Yeah. You're safe. So why don't you mind your own business? If yeah. you believe that. Oh, and by the way, as you well know, was it Israel, the, uh, the cases of people that have been doubly vaccinated. Now they're going for three shots because yeah. they're getting the virus again, that you were supposed to have a 96% efficacy rate when they sold it. And now, according to the Israeli health ministry, it's only down to 39%. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Um, well, I, I, uh, while I see the same problems as you, like I said, I do have hope. Uh, I believe that there is great hope and prosperity. I believe that we do win here. I believe that the humans have this drive for freedom. I mean, history tells us, um, this is not the first time that humans have faced, uh, you know, enslavement and oppression and things like that. Um, and every time they push back and they regain that freedom, as you said, it just takes a small percentage of people yep. to push back. And that's why I'm trying to wake people up. You're trying to wake people up. We're trying to give them practical tips of what they can do. Actually, and encourage I'm them. not trying. I'm not trying to wake anybody. up. OK, well, I'm, what I'm what I'm what my objective is, is to unite the people that are awake. Yeah. I don't care about the other ones. Yeah. They don't count. Yeah. Again, uh, the, the Civil War, less than 1% of the people supported it when it happened. On the 50% when it was going full blast. And we, this, I remember our conversation was about hope. And, uh, and I said, hope is, they say, is the most negative word in the metaphysical dictionary. Because it's wanting something to happen without doing anything to make it happen. Mm, yeah. I agree with you what you're saying about hope in the sense that, yes, if we unite, we could do it. Well, I have this as my uh, screenshot that I use on all my slides, right? I'm not trying to wake up the sheep, I'm trying to wake up the sleeping lions. You got it. Amen. Oh, right. I got to be proper. A women. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the sheep, I mean, the sheep, the sheep right? But, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the waking lions, if we can wake I them. I love it. I love it. I agree with you 100%. I'll remember that. And I'm going to use that as well and give you credit for it. Ah, nice. That's you're uh, right. You're right. You're right. We have to wake up the sleeping lions. Yeah. Encourage them, wake them up, encourage them, motivate them, uh, coordinate them. Um, and we, and we can overcome. We could win this so easily. So easily. Look what happened with Cuomo. Yeah. The governor. I was the first guy to call him out. You look, go back to my YouTubes going back to March, 2020. I called him a little dictator, daddy's boy born on third base and thought he had a home run. An yeah. arrogant little boy. That's all these guys are, by the way. George Carlin used to say, it's one big club and you ain't in it. Yeah. You think this guy would have been governor if daddy wasn't Mario? And that little lowlife renamed the Tappan Zee Bridge after his father. Of course, it's 20 million bucks. And then his little brother, Chrissy Cuomo on CNN. You think he'd have that job? You think that uh, daddy's girl, uh, Anderson Cooper, would be there if mommy wasn't Gloria Vanderbilt? You know, people better get this in their head. Yeah. It's one big club and you ain't in it. And we have to form our own club, the club of true men and women, true American patriots, citizens of America that believe in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Yep. And that we will. <laughs> so with that, okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Uh, we are in the fight of our lives. I think you framed it up perfectly. Uh, I believe there's hope on the other side. I think, like I said, if we can both <laughs> wake up the sleeping lions, yep. uh, but give them really the practical steps. I think you've summed it up with your three G's are pretty good. Um, the guns, I don't know about that. You know, those are hard to travel with outside the country, but the, but the gold <laughs> money outside the banking system and the ability to move around is definitely going to be key. Um, and so uh, let's continue to go ahead and spread that word. But uh, Gerald, um, uh, so you have the trends research. Why don't you just tell people the best things that they should be following for you? I know you have a YouTube channel, you have your report. Twitter, Gerald Salenti on Twitter, the YouTube channels, of course, the social media, but the magazine, the Trends Journal. You know, I'm not Trends saying it because it's my magazine. There's no magazine that can come close to it. 162 pages this week, no ads. And we give people, this is what's going on. Then we give them a trend post and a trend forecast, what it is, what it means, where is it going? Yeah. 
that we could take a direction and you could do what you want. So we talk about all the things that are going on, what it means. I'll give you an example. When they had those uh, protests in Myanmar going back several months ago, yeah. we wrote right away, they're, they're going to lose. You think we want to write that, that they're going to lose? No, but we know what's going on. China's involved. They're going to push this thing down. They're going to lose. So again, so we call it the way it is and where it's going. Yeah. And now what we're saying, of course, we're doing a lot on the economic front. And this thing about inflation, that's the real big one to and the debt load. We have another great writer, Gregory Manorino, that writes with us. And he's been writing about this, this debt load. Is, it's, un, it's unprecedented. Yeah. And it's global. It's global. Yeah. And it goes back to the Bitcoin, gold and silver. Yeah. Because smart people know that this digital crap printed on nothing and backed by nothing is worth nothing. And that the government is called debt. Oh, let's go back to the debt for just one second. You got all this debt. How are you going to raise interest rates? That ain't going to happen. Rates, you got to pay more on your debt. Right. And all those mergers and acquisition activities, borrowed money, you're going to have to pay more. Oh, yeah. When interest rates go up, this thing crashes. Well, interest rates aren't going to go up. <laughs> so That's anybody right. thinks they can raise interest rates or they can stop stimulus uh, isn't paying attention, in my opinion. Right. Um, cool. Well, with that, we're going to sign it off. We're going to go ahead and bring you. We'll have you. We'll have you come back. We'll dig into some uh, updated trends at some point in the future. I'm going to link to everything down in the show notes so they can follow your trends uh, research. Um, and then uh, with that, we'll uh, end it. Thanks so much, Gerald. And thank you. All right. Being on, Mark. All right. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Gerald as I did. Um, he has been nailing these trends for 40 years. It's an amazing track record that he has. Come see him speak live at my event. I'm going to be there. 15 of my other good friends that you see on my channel regularly talking about how to survive the Great Reset, what they expect to happen over the next couple of years. More importantly, what to do to survive and thrive. Actual things you can do. Um, there's a link in the description below. Come check out the live event. I hope to see you there.